Let's see why this thing wasn't moving. <sighs> the axle's broken. Let's talk about it. Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. In this video, we wanna to talk to you about common issues that you might have with your axles. Your drive axles are designed to be resistant from twisting, from the torque, from your vehicle, trying to power those wheels sending you down the road. They're also supposed to be very well balanced. You can imagine, while you're driving down the road, how fast your axle is going to have to spin while turning that wheel. The faster you're driving, the faster the axle will spin. So if it's off balance, you're going to find that you have a shaking issue. If you need this or any other part, check us out at oneauto.com. You can get the part shipped fast and free directly to your door. Some vehicles, especially rear wheel drive vehicles, will have a solid axle and that'll be located inside of a differential tube. There really isn't very many ways that these can get damaged and there aren't too many symptoms that you're going to have to worry about. So let's move along to talking about exposed axles like these ones right here. There's a couple different types of exposed axles that you might have in your vehicle. One type is considered a CV joint axle or a constant velocity joint axle. The other type is a U joint axle. The CV joint axle will have a protective boot over the area. It's gonna help keep grease inside there and dirt and debris out. The U joint type of axle is pretty much just exposed to all the elements, except for the boots that are on each of the cups. Now let's go over a few different ways that an axle can go bad and some symptoms to look for. If your axle had rod on it, it's possible to throw off the balance of the axle itself. So of course, the faster you're driving, the faster that the axle's spinning. If the balance is off, you're going to find that you have a shake. Now, if this was to get rotted to the point that it was weak, you can imagine how much torque there is coming from your engine and transmission, trying to power those wheels, sending you down the road. The axle could potentially twist and break. That's gonna be an extreme case, but it has happened several times before, and I've got one right here in front of me to show you. If this happens while the vehicle's in motion, those two halves could be swinging around, potentially causing serious damage to either your transmission or some of your steering and suspension parts. Now, obviously, if your axle's already broken in half, you know what's wrong. But what if you wanted to catch it before you had this issue? You could try to climb underneath the vehicle and have a look to see if you even have a vibration dampener. If you do, it might be a little bit hard to see underneath there because it is attached to the axle itself. Sometimes it'll be apparent and you're going to see some rust and rot around that area. Other times, the only issue is going to be underneath that and you're never even gonna know until you actually remove that vibration dampener. So if I had an axle that looked like this one right here, that would be something that I wanna replace ASAP. I wouldn't keep driving it like this. The next common issue that I wanna talk about with axles with a CV joint is the CV boot itself. The reason why you need to have a boot over this area is because inside of the joint, it needs to be lubricated with axle grease. The boot's gonna make sure that that grease stays in and the debris and moisture stay out. Now, if for some reason the boot was torn, like this one right here, you're gonna have an issue while you're driving down the road, all the grease is going to spray out of there. It's also possible for any moisture or debris to make its way into that joint. When that happens, you might hear a little bit of a clicking noise while you're driving down the road, especially while you're trying to make a turn at lower speeds. After that, once it starts binding up and overheating, you might even find that you have a shaking or shimmying while you're driving down the road. So we talked about CV joints on axles. I also mentioned that some axles will have a U-joint, like this one right here. There's different ways that you wanna inspect this. We'll go with visual. Have a quick look. Do you see any rust around those caps? Typically, that means that moisture made its way in to those internal roller bearings. It's not a good thing. You can also test with a pry bar. Gently try prying up and down to see if you have any movement coming from those caps. If there's a little bit of movement, generally that's okay. If you see a grease fitting, go ahead and apply a little bit of grease and see if that movement went away. If it has a lot of movement and rust, that's not a good sign at all. At that point, it tells you that you need to replace the U-joint. To replace the U-joint on these, you're going to have to remove the entire axle from the vehicle. So of course, if it looks like it's rusted or rotted in any way, you have the axle out anyways, just go ahead and replace it with a brand new one. Something else that I want you to consider. On the end of your axle, where it goes into either your transmission or your differential, there's going to be a C-clamp or a snap ring. You can call it whatever you want. It's possible for that little snap ring to get damaged, especially if you had removed the axle because you were doing some sort of front end work and then you try to slide it back in there. As you can tell looking at this one, it got peened over and damaged. If you were to leave it like this, it's possible 
for the axle to go ahead and slide right out of that transmission or differential, at least enough to the point where the transmission and the axle aren't even making contact anymore. When this happens, the vehicle typically won't be able to move because it's not going to be able to turn that axle for you, and you might hear some sort of grinding noise coming from the area. When that happens, you're going to want to make sure that you slide underneath the vehicle and take a look. Make sure it looks like the base of the axle is pressed all the way in up against that transmission and it's not sitting out at all. If you can see the seal and it looks like it's leaking, typically that means that the axle isn't seated properly. Now we can get into a brief overview of how to replace your CV axle. Of course, safety first, hand and eye protection at all times. The next thing that you would want to do is make sure you're in a nice, safe, level area. Safely raise and support the front of your vehicle. Make sure you use your emergency brake or chalk those rear wheels. Once you've done that, go ahead and take off that front wheel. Remove the axle nut. After that's out of the way, you can remove your caliper with the bracket and your brake rotor. After you've done that, you want to make sure that you free up the axle from the wheel bearing. Typically, it's going to be stuck in there, possibly by rust. You can use a punch and a hammer, give it a couple loving bonks to break it free. You're going to have to remove the axle from inside of that wheel bearing. To do that, generally you have to remove either the outer tie rod end and the upper ball joint, or just the upper ball joint. And then you can pivot that knuckle down, and then you should be able to pull that axle right out of the back side of the wheel bearing. It's important to make sure you have a collection receptacle underneath the area where the axle comes out of either your transmission or your differential. Fluid might come out of there. It only makes sense to recycle it properly. You can go ahead and carefully get underneath that with an axle pry tool or even a small pry bar. Gently pry up against the differential or transmission, being extremely careful not to damage it in any way. We're just trying to pop the axle free. As I mentioned earlier in the video, there's going to be a little C-clamp or snap ring on the end of that. You need to get it to pop out of its place, and then you should be able to slide the axle right out of there. I've replaced a lot of axles in my time, and one of the things that I've come to find is that after you remove the axle and you go to inspect the axle seal, typically it's either damaged or worn in some way. So it only makes sense to go ahead and have one on hand. To replace the seal, it's very simple once the axle's out. Generally, you can just go ahead and pop it out of there with a pry bar or a seal remover, inspect the area on the transmission or differential where it goes, and then put in a brand new seal. At that point, you'd move into putting in the brand new axle. Remember, if you need this or any other part, check us out, 1AAuto.com, have the part shipped directly to your door. Now, I hope you learned something in this video, and I hope you liked it. If there was something in the video that you think somebody might be interested in, go ahead and share it with them. It would mean everything to me. If you liked the video or even loved the video, go ahead and smash on the like button for me. It would mean the world. While you're at it, go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell. That way there you, all of your friends, can be kept up with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching.